Okay, let's start with this. I don't have a sketch of the sky. I'm not going to bother, I think, with it because we're still on the same day and I'm still picking up paint. It's still too wet. You know, the tint is too wet. But I just didn't want to wait. I wanted to get into it. Now, if I'm going to make this about... Okay, if I'm going to make the sky very important in this painting, I wanted to leave a lot of room for it. So, for example, that is about one-third of the way up the canvas. All right? You know that old guideline about spatial division, thirds? That's fine. But it's not a stop sign. It's more of a, you know, it's not a rule, it's not a law, it's just a suggestion. Because I'm going to have more sky, I dropped my horizon line quite a bit lower. I'm not going to show perspective going way beyond what I see here. I'm still going to call this just a bit of a ridge. I kept the buildings small because I'm not going to put detail on them. I don't want to 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 emphasize what what you know the structure of these buildings so much as the outline of the buildings. So we're going to sort of focus on the silhouette. I think that provides plenty of interest for the foreground. It's adequate. Now, I know that I said I'm going to use a knife. But in order to get into all of these Uh, these cracks, you know, in order to get the shape down quite thoroughly. I'm going to start with a brush and I'm going to go around these shapes. In the color that I believe I'm going to end up with from basically here on down. Um, it's not going to stand out very much because I'm going to go with, a, with purple. A type of purple. I'll describe that in a moment. Um, so it's not going to stand out against the rest of the, you know, this, this burnt sienna. But it's going to be, I think, what I'm after for, for, for the lower end of the sky. Might it reintroduce it somewhere else? We'll see. So that's a warm color. It'll be a warm purple, not a cold purple. And it's going to look cold against the burnt sienna, but it won't be ultimately. Ultimately. <clears throat> Okay, that means because I'm going to go with purple uh, close to the horizon, I'm likely going to um, go with much bluer, a colder blue, or even leaning into the greens, deep greens on these buildings. This whole bunch, this clump of trees, the, everything will probably be very dark greens. And then as I come forward, now this will all be very dark in the foreground, right? Very dark. Uh, so as I come forward, I'm going to stick with 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 deeper darker colors maybe maybe be using some raw umber some burnt sienna some some um, ultramarine blue um, what have you not going to worry about that right now I'm just establishing this line okay and up let me just move the camera now Moved away off to the side. So that my head doesn't get in the way too much while I'm painting this. Now with this, with the paint I'm about to apply, I'm going to add just a hint of, of uh, turpentine. Not much. I'm adding a bit of turpentine just to thin it off. Um, but not so thin that it becomes a wash-in. That way, even though it's a bit thinned off, it's, it's uh, still going to be, uh, well, structurally just fine to leave it and not paint over it. So if I don't get every square millimeter with the knife, I'm not worried about it because I've already got the basic color in place. Flip my viewfinder around here. Okay, so... What I'm going to use to make this purple is um, cad red medium. I could use 
I could use alizarin crimson as well. But alizarin crimson tends to get a little more pink-ish. So for this purpose, this time I'm going to stick with cad red medium and a little bit of cobalt blue because I don't want it to, to appear sort of a pinkish purple. I'd like it to be a little warmer than that, you know? From here on up will be, or from here, certainly up here, will be warm. From here on down will be cold and dark. From here can be a little bit cooler up here as well. But right now we want warm against cold. Higher value against lower value. Not really high value. I'm probably gonna bring more higher value up here. We have the bump in the horizon. Let's balance it with some light up here. Maybe, okay, those are my thoughts for the moment. So, let me just grab a brush here and mix up a little bit. There's a thing about If you mix alizarin crimson with cobalt blue, you can put quite a bit of alizarin crimson in there and you'll still have a purple. If you mix cad red medium with cobalt blue, you better overwhelmingly have cad red medium in there or just a touch of cobalt blue because the cad red medium gets killed pretty quickly. The alizarin crimson seems to have more staying power. very tempted to go quite red, but I don't want to do that. If I go extremely red, this becomes very strong. I don't want to compete with whatever we're going to have in, you know, in, in, the, in the sky. So you're probably not even going to be able to see this very well. But what I'm doing is I'm lowering really mostly the chroma. I'm killing the chroma a little bit. I want it to be strong enough so that we have a good silhouette, but not overwhelmingly good. I want this to grab the eye, and the second thing I want people to notice is, oh yeah, there's some buildings. Or at least, at least look at them simultaneously. Rather than looking at the buildings as the focal point or focal area, and then moving up to the sky. We'll see how successful. We'll see how successful I am with that. Okay, that's still I'm not being generous enough with my paint here. Nope. Add a little more weight to it. It still goes a bit pinky, but it's a warmer pink. And what I'm going to do to warm it up further is I'm going to add a little yellow ochre. There, I think that's a little better. that exact color on the brush. I'll go to the other side of the building here, briefly. My intention is to show this as just a bit of snow fence. And I don't want to get too detailed, but I do want to indicate Maybe I have 
the slash too close to the middle. Um, I think I might. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just focus on the task at hand here. Worry about the details when the details need to be worried about. Well, details. Worry about one thing at a time. Okay. You'll notice that I'm just doing a stroke or two before I reload my brush. I don't want a brush that's half dry. Your stroke will get very weak if you do that. up a little more. See the value difference there. Okay, a little more white with yellow ochre. That. That's that's strong again. Let's put a little bit of a chink in the odd bit of bush so that it keeps looking like bush. That's enough. I'm in danger of being too uh, enamored with detail right now. We don't want that. Okay, so we're moving off to the right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. A little premature there, abandoning my shapes. Yeah, I'm enjoying playing with the brush, but I want to try to keep in mind what my plan is here. I don't know, I might I might end up just if I'm having too much fun, I might just end up continuing with the brush for the sake of continuing to paint. You know, this is dry enough that I could just go ahead with the brush. Ah, who knows? We'll see. Alright, I was just about to say, as we're getting towards the edges now, I don't want this line to be too strong or this line to be too strong. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but this line is actually a little lighter 
and this line's a little bit lighter as we get to the edges, even in my sketch, even in the underpainting. So, the sky is a little higher value here. Let's lower the value slightly to the sides. Just a bit, not, not much. I'm taking the warmth out of it. I'm not going to stay with adding a touch of yellow ochre. I'm putting a little more blue in. I'm even dropping it down a little bit to the edge. Suits me fine. I mean, you know, the earth is round after all. And if you don't believe that, then that's okay. Just bear with me and pretend that the earth is round. I don't want this line to be razor straight, but pretty close. We are out in the prairies today with this painting. Okay, I think that uh, I'm just going to have a sit now and uh, decide what to do, where I'm going to go with this. Am I going to keep going with the brush or am I going to play with the knife? If I jump, you know, if I leave it as it is and I end up with, with doing the painting with a knife, then I'm still going to take these colors and go over the majority of these areas with the knife. But I have the option now. I could go either way. But I like the original, you know, or the, the, the early stages of establishing exactly our most important line of the painting, and that is this line. For me, for me, it's kind of necessary. Necessary. Okay. I'm going to put this video out now, too. Two videos today. Another day with two videos. We'll square it off a second. No, a minute. Uh, no, for a, for, for a brief moment. And maybe you can sort of... You see all the glare on there from the light that's above it. But now the drawing has already been r refined a little bit, you know? And if I don't get the knife quite against the right edge, it's okay. The forgiveness is already in place by having used a brush to start with. And another thing that's kind of nice about using a brush over a wet tint, your lines are softer. And when you have something that's a bit distant, you want your lines to be a bit soft. All right. Next time. I'll probably wash in the foreground so that it's nice and dark and provides no sort of uh, color competition. But uh, I'll do that before the next video, likely. Next time we'll, uh, we'll dig into the sky. See you soon, guys.